Well, today we've got an interesting one. My neighbour dropped off what's left of his uh, immobiliser for his vehicle, or at least the key fob that operates it. And uh, among the problems on here, we can zoom in and have a look at exactly what this one has. This little switch right here where it says SW1, that tactile switch is pretty much busted. It's been touching it with a key to get it to work for a while, and uh, unfortunately that's the unlock button. This is the lock button. So today we're going to see what we can do to try and get this at least in some way functional. Now my first thought is swapping over the tactile switch. I don't have any spares, but I do have a box full of old e-waste, including these um, woeful Telstra routers. So we're going to crack this one open and uh, see if we can rob some tactile switches off and hopefully they're of a suitable size. Right, so we ripped the board out and we discovered that this one doesn't have the right style tactile switches. These bridge these two contacts instead of the ones along that direction. So we can't use them. Although interestingly, there is another little long tactile switch in here, which I think is a reset button. All right, I had a scrounger in the workshop and I found this, which I think is a front panel out of an L uh, a VCR or something like that. <clears throat> it's got a whole bunch of these two pin tactile switches. They might be able to be adapted. All right, so we managed to extract a couple of these switches. And uh, first job now is uh, to get this little component off the board here. We're gonna get this guy off. So zoom in a little bit here. All right, um, we're gonna get the heat gun onto this one, I think. And hopefully we can lift it off and hopefully I can do so without uh, too much problem. So let's see if we can get things into a film uh, appreciable way or film friendly way. My wording goes out the window when I do this stuff. I do have a bit of flux floating around. We may resort to that if this doesn't work. You gotta be careful because sometimes you can melt these plastic tactile switches out of their casing and you can rip the, uh, the tracks off the board like I almost did just there. Alright, let's start. Uh, Take a moment to restock. All right, we've jumped over to the microscope here, which I've got to turn the light back on for. And I'm just inspecting um, some of the area here. The track between this and this point, I got really lucky. It has stripped off the board, but it's still connected, as well as this and the through hole. So we still have electrical connection. Um, I'd say that was probably fragile when this was here and maybe also not quite enough heat to get that off the board. A Little bit hasty. So I've taken this switch and I've uh, straightened the legs out, the sides. I may be able to attach this and then I'll glue the thing down so hopefully it doesn't move after that. All right, so we have ourselves um, a little bit of really tiny solder here, a piece of blue tack to hold it in position and a nice hot iron. And we're gonna be really gentle here. I bumped my continuity probes together. Now, I want to be ultra gentle here because I do not want to damage these tracks any further. Alright, I think we have that component on there. I think this other switch, I'm not going to mess with this other switch unless I have to. Um, what I think we need to do now is test a few things. Now, firstly, I want to test the batteries. That's part of the reason I have this aluminium strip along here is uh, for grounding. Uh, the other part is for testing batteries. So 0.5 volts and 2.88 volts. So these are Panasonic CR 1616 3 volt cells. So it should be expecting 6 volts I would say. Um, I can probably feed it 5 volts and I think it would probably run just fine. Fortunately, in amongst everything here, I have a 5 volt output on this. Um, we're going to leave it isolated for a minute first, and we're going to check the negative and positive. So I'm glad that this is marked on this board, that this is negative and this is positive here. So, it is 5 volts, it's a little under the supply voltage. Here goes nothing. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm holding here. Let's turn on our 5 volts. Can we make our light flash? We can. Okay. 
our light flashes with a push button. And with both of them, we got really lucky with that track. We're going to do this a little zoomed out because my fingers are usually going to get in the way here. We need a little bit more blue tack. And to make ourselves a bit of a, an angled slope here. And uh, I'm using Loctite, um, which I usually like to use Loctite 406, but it's a little hard to find. This stuff should be good enough. Um, and I'm running out of it. I need to get some more. Try and just get a nice bead under there. And now we'll level the board out a little bit. And uh, we'll try and get a little bit under this side. Hopefully, if we can wick that in there, we'll help bond that switch down. Fortunately, there's a really good sun ray coming straight into my desk here. Now, I need to find something similar to these batteries here. So we'll see what we can do. I think he's lost the top off this key fob. But um, we might end up putting it in a more decorative case for him. But uh, I'll see if I've got some similar size batteries. Alright, I don't have any of the right size batteries. But I found a couple of mismatched ones that have some voltage. And we get a little tiny blinky light in there. Okay, so it is working off battery. But not well. So we need to find a decent set of batteries. Alright, we're at a bit of an impasse here. None of these batteries are doing the job they should. So we're going to piss them all off for a minute. They're the sizes we need. We need to get his car moving because it's got to get to the mechanic. So I have a project I put together some time ago. This is a little voltage, uh, a little, a uh, um, basic little buck boost converter in a box. And uh, I can run that off the Ryobi battery in my torch and I can dial a voltage. So I think we need to change our multiplier and go up to, what are we going to, oh I turned it off, that's why. Turn it back on and we need to dial their voltage back right down to 5 volts. And then I can use my banana plug connectors here to plug in my little clip probes. Fortunately I have a couple of these. Alright, that should allow me to plug the correct polarity in to avoid mistakes. Okay to dial their voltage right back. This means I can go over to his vehicle with basically a portable lab supply. Um, can we change multipliers? That's amps. We should be able to change the digit. We can, yeah, that's a little easier. Come down by 0.1 of a volt instead of 0 0.01. Let's come down to about 5.5 volts just to be on the safe side. Okay, there we go. 5.5 volts. Now let's um, see if we can get a blinky light happening. Let's double check that our negative is on that one. Our positive is definitely on that one. Can we get a flashy light? We can. Okay. So I can take all this set up over next door. Um, what happens if I turn this off? And unclip those first. Turn this back on. It's probably going to reset to the 10 volt mark. Anyway, we'll be able to uh, set that up over there. So let's go get his car unlocked and then we'll find a solution for the battery. <laughs> 